Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Gran Turismo 7's 1.48 update for the end of May. Now with all these monthly updates, as you all know by now, they kind of have like a... We have our expectations set. We get a couple of new cars, a couple of new events, maybe a couple of new extra menu books, a couple of new engine swaps, and that's really been it. And to be honest, that's what we've gotten with this update. But the game changer is that we've got a brand new brand. And funny enough, it is Volvo. So with this update, we have not one, not two, not three, not four, but five new cars. And they are the 1993 Honda Civic SIR2 EG. The 1987 Nissan Skyline GTS R R31. The 1993 Volvo 240 SE Estate. The 2013 Volvo V40 T5 R Design. And finally, the 2000 Honda NSX GT500. So if I'm honest, the cars are pretty alright. You know, another Skyline never hurts. And then having, of course, the... Honda NSX GT500, kind of an awesome car to be added in, but all the other ones are like, eh, I guess it's nice to have. I would love to see people taking the Volvo 240 and making it look like the, um, I'm trying to remember what racing series it was a part of, but in like the late 1990s, it was part of an actual racing series. I didn't, I don't think it's DTM. But having like the extra body kits and all the liveries on this station wagon, it's just awesome. So I'd love to see what everybody does with that car uh, when we finally get our hands on it. The new events that we've gotten are the Sunday Cup 400 for Kyoto Driving Park. We've got the Japanese FF Challenge 450 for Atopolis. We have the... Then we've got the Japanese FR Challenge 450. And then finally, the World Touring Car 800 for the Circuit de St. Croix Layout A. And I'm going to be honest, of all the different races that this course has, I don't think I've ever done Layout A. And it's such a wild difference from Layout B. Now, Layout B is just this monster of a course. But somehow, Layout A takes that and says, no, 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 no. We're going to make this even longer with even more tight chicanes that just kind of wind amongst themselves. And it's just, this is crazy. Again, like I said, this has been in the game before, but having the World Touring Car 800 for, I believe, Layout A and B now is just super cool because one of the main issues that I'm having right now is I'm on field mode 6 and it's lap 2 and I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to the end it's this course is just super long I love it because it just makes it super challenging yeah having more than 3 minute long lap times for a course like this is just absolutely epic as we're going through the field here. Really fun stuff. Furthermore, some of the additional notes for the update is that the extra menu book number 39 is kind of a big one. It includes some of the most awesome Japanese legend cars that if you are a fan of Gran Turismo, you'll know each and every one of them very well. And it's awesome to have them included kind of real nice capstone if you will if they don't add any more menu books after this this would be like the perfect ending for the extra menu book series because it's just you've got the honda nsx gt500 you've got the very famous castrol toyota supra and you've got the legendary Nissan Skyline race car. Just all awesome, great picks for that menu book. All right, I'm going to have to use my phone in hand for this one. Next part of the update is the new engine swaps. 
So engine swaps are now available for the Honda Civic SIR2, the EG 1993 version, the Honda Civic Type REK 1997 version, Honda Civic Type REK Touring Car, Honda Integra Type R, the DC2 1995 version, and the Nissan Slady 1998. So when it comes to this update, it's kind of awesome to see just more cars being added, the game continuously being supported further, and just at this point, I think we've reached a point <laughs> I think we've reached a point where if this game is no more cars are added, no more anything is added, I think the remaining fan base is quite okay with what we've got. From when this game was first released well over two years ago now, it was in a very different state. <laughs> and it's just very cool to see what it's become. As a personal note, as you can tell by the different camera angle on the foot cam, I finally got an H-pattern shifter, and I actually got a clutch pedal, so for those of you cringing the lawn with me, watching me attempt very poorly to do a manual transmission race, there we go. <laughs> God damn. Uh, and then here we go. Hey. There we go, finally. Some good sh downshifts. And that's the really fun thing that I enjoy about this game is I have never driven a manual transmission car ever. And when you get all this equipment set up, this is a good enough game where I feel like you can actually start learning how to drive a manual transmission car. Of course, you're not going to have the feeling of the gate with the manual shifter, nor are you going to have like the feeling of the, um, I'm trying to think of the technical terminology, but like with the clutch pedal, that, that bite point, you're not going to really feel that with at least this, the uh, Fanatic clutch pedal kit. But with the amount of amazing technological advancements that we've got coming with all sorts of different sim racing companies with the whole announcement that Corsair may be acquiring Fnatic. I'm really hoping that Corsair is going to start pushing Fnatic to make some really, really advanced products like m mimicking or cloning the active pedal for $3,000 a piece or whatever it is. But making it a little bit more uh, budget friendly, you know, finding a way how to replicate it. I, I know a couple of companies have got like haptic sensors for their pedals now. I think that's the way to go. I think that would be pretty neat. So for the time being, I think I'm going to stick with uh, flat pedal gearboxes or cars that are technically automatic by design. And then that is the Volvo V40 T5R design. So I will be sticking with this for the European Sunday Cup 400 on Kyoto Driving Park. Now the last part of this video may be very much so aged like milk by the time I'm done with it or maybe very uh, nice, a good tie-in with potential new news coming out. Uh, as of later today, Sony is going to be having their state of play for 2024 which is going to announce or continue discussing some very big projects that are in the pipeline and with the amount of basically games that are coming out they're going to be showing up showcasing 14 games over the next you know 30 minutes or whatever so like two minutes a piece for trailers there's a lot of speculation that once again Gran Turismo 7 is coming to PC I'm gonna really I'm gonna I'm just gonna struggle with this a little bit because as much as I want it to come to PC, this is in my mind going to be the final time 
that Sony can potentially announce this. This game has been out for nearly two and a half years now. So if this game is in the pipeline for coming to PC, they better get on it quick. But what I realistically think is going to happen is this game, Gran Turismo 7, will be the last PlayStation exclusive game part of the Gran Turismo franchise. What I mean by that is I get the feeling that since there's been absolutely zero hints, no nothing, anything, that Gran Turismo 7 is coming to PC, I think it's very most likely that Gran Turismo 8 will have a release with PC and PlayStation 5. I'm going to take a gander that it will probably be 2026, something like that, because my mind, they are not going to announce Gran Turismo 8 part of this state of play. I don't think we're going to have any Gran Turismo news part of this state of play, but I think it'll just be more no news. We'll continue getting these monthly updates. And either by the end of this year or by state of play next year in 2025, we'll finally get Gran Turismo 8 news. And at the very end of the trailer, it'll say to be released on PC and PlayStation 5. And then that's it. I know with Ghost of Tsushima, Sony was testing out basically using a Sony overlay and being able to make it work with online play so people who own Ghost of Tsushima on PlayStation and PC can interact with one another and play online that way. I think with Gran Turismo 7, it's such a behemoth of a game that they've got to have their servers and everything completely down perfectly so there's no bugs, no latency issues, no nothing between the two versions. And I think it's just too much of a daunting task for the moment being. I think it's just... It's not something that they can just shove into the game and call it a day. I think that there's a lot of optimization that they would need to make for this game to work very well with all sorts of different levels of PCs. And I think it's just... The game is so old at this point, it would just make more sense to make Gran Turismo 8 the thing that is the more scalable project make an absolutely massive blockbuster release because at this point people who want to play Gran Turismo 7 already have it I don't think there's many people that will want to own it on both PC and PlayStation 5 but we'll see like I said maybe uh, maybe Gran Turismo 7 PC is going to be announced later today and I'll have to make some massive annotation in the video saying edit by the way this information is now confirmed or whatever but we'll see so there we have it yet another gran turismo monthly update again this is the 1.48 update five new cars a couple of new events another extra menu book a couple of engine swaps you know how it goes so at this point, I'll still agree with my previous statement saying that if Polyphony just says, you know what, we're going to stop supporting Gran Turismo 7, we're going to be all hands on deck for Gran Turismo 8, I'd be pretty okay with that. This game has really evolved from when it was released two years ago. And yeah, as much as people are saying that we could have more circuits and this, that, the other thing, I think they just need to go back and just start working on the ones that they haven't played because there are so many gems of tracks in this game that are just awesome maybe i'll eat my own words and when uh the gran turismo world series has their first round in montreal maybe they'll drop an announcement saying oh by the way you know we're here it's uh we've got the montreal track the gilleville nerve track that's been rumored since prior to spec 2 so that's been close to six months now so at this point, um, let me know what you guys' comments, thoughts, questions, critiques, anything you've got, whether it be part of this update or if you're going to agree or disagree with Gran Turismo 7 PC. Honestly, if it doesn't get announced during this state of play, I'm going to shut up about it because at this point, it's so evident that this is the last place that they can do it. 
So let me know what your all uh, thoughts are in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. We've got another great Tuesday video coming out uh, in a couple of days, so stay tuned for all that. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye. Thank you.